This is a GCSE video about forces. Now forces can come in a lot of different forms, but basically what forces are, are things to change either the shape, the size, or how something is moving. Now we talked a little bit about changing the size and shape of springs in the previous video. In this video, we're gonna talk about the force, of, the force on something changing how it is moving. Now here we have a wooden block. Now I know from my experience that if I push that block that way with my finger, it will start to move that way. But we can get a little bit more scientific about that when we talk about forces. Now forces, we usually use arrows on diagrams to talk about forces. So if I put an arrow there to show the force from my finger, then that block is going to move in the direction of that force. Now I also know from my experience that if I push the block that way and I push the block that way at the same time, it doesn't move. I can represent this force with another arrow. And so now, the block is not moving. The block is just staying in the same place. If the force is bigger, if this force is bigger than this force, then I know that the block will move that way. And if this force is bigger than this force, I know that the block will move that way. Now, we can get a bit more scientific by giving numbers to these forces. So if I take the block away for a minute and I just illustrate it with a square like that, I can see that there are two forces on this block. Now force is measured in newtons. And the unit we use for that is a capital N. So force is measured in newtons, which is a capital N. So I'm gonna say that the force from my finger here was two newtons. When I put this other force here, I'm gonna say that was two newtons as well. And so if I've got two newtons pushing that way and two newtons pushing that way, the block doesn't move. Now, if I do that in a different example here, and I have my two newtons from this first finger, but then three newtons from this finger on the left, I know that the block is going to move that way because this force is bigger. Now we've put numbers, it's a little bit more easy to see what's going on. We can find out the total force. We've got two newtons going that way and two newtons going that way. So they cancel each other out. So our total force acting on the block, once you've done all the cancelling out, is zero newtons. Now we call this a resultant force. Resultant force is the total force after you've cancelled out any forces that might cancel each other out. Down here, we've got two newtons going that way, but we've got three newtons going that way. So two newtons here cancels two of these newtons, but our resultant force is one newton to the right, because we've got more newtons here, we've got one extra newton here than here. So we've got a resultant force of one newton to the right. Now this can work in more than one dimension. So we've got here a a, a box with six newtons pushing each way, so you should be able to tell from this that the resultant force is zero. If we put some forces down here, three newtons, two newtons, then we, even though we've got lots of different forces acting, these two cancel each other out, two of these cancel two of these, so our resultant force there is one newton upwards. Now forces can only cancel each other out if they're opposite each other. So this, this force can cancel this force, but this force can't cancel out this force. That is at 90 degrees, so it's totally separate. These two cancel, these two cancel, and we end up with a resultant force of one newton going up. 
Now we also know from our experience that if you put a force on something, it makes it speed up, it makes it move. And we can get a little bit more scientific about that as well. And we can say that the force, the resultant force, is the mass of the object times its acceleration. Now, acceleration is change in speed. So the acceleration of something is how much it changes its speed or velocity divided by how long it takes. So the acceleration is the change in velocity over time. And because we're talking about velocity, and remember velocity has a direction, acceleration also has a direction. And we know we've just found out that force, with force, direction is important with that as well. So if I put a bigger force on this block, it will accelerate faster. It will change speed faster. Now, if I draw a little diagram down here of this block, when I put a force here and there's no force pushing that way, we know that there is a resultant force going that way and that will accelerate the block. The heavier the block is, the smaller the acceleration or the bigger the force you need to accelerate it. So I need a smaller force to accelerate this block compared with if I was pushing a car. That wouldn't move a car very much, that small amount of force. So we're causing a block to accelerate by applying a force. Now when it is moving, other forces are trying to slow it down, like friction and air resistance. So eventually, when the block is going fast enough, there will be a force going this way as well. Now if my force going into the block, pushing the block, is two newtons, the faster the block is going, the more air resistance and friction it will experience, and eventually, that will equal two newtons as well. Now if this block is already moving, I'm pushing it with two newtons, and there's two newtons going the other way as well, then it's important to remember that that means that there's no acceleration. It does not mean necessarily that it is stopped. It means that acceleration is zero. Resultant force is zero, so acceleration is zero. So if a block is moving already and the forces are balanced like this, then that means the acceleration is zero. It means it's not changing speed. It's going at a constant speed. If the block is stationary and the forces are all balanced, then it stays at a constant speed there. The constant speed here is zero. The constant speed here is, let's say, one meter per second, but both of them have zero acceleration. So when the forces are balanced like this, it can either mean that the object is not moving, or if the object is already moving, it is travelling at a constant speed, because acceleration is zero. Now there's another thing that is closely linked to force, and that is something called pressure. Now, we know from our own experience that if I put the sharp end of this pin into my hand, it's going to hurt a lot more than if I put the not sharp end. And that is because of pressure. It is because this, if you're not using scientific language, it's because this is sharp and this is not sharp. If we make that more scientific, we can say that this has a smaller area than this. So pressure is related to area, and the formula that we use for pressure is P for pressure is force divided by area. So I know that that hurts more than that, and I can show that a little bit more scientifically if I try and push this in to this plasticine and I use, try and use the same amount of force that goes in about that much. 
if I use the sharp side and I use the same amount of force, it goes in much deeper. So the smaller the area, you can think of it like all the force is being concentrated in a smaller area. And that means that the pressure is higher. So when I'm pushing the spike into the, into the plasticine, the pressure on the plasticine is much higher than if I'm pushing this. And if I take that even more extreme, if I try and push this into the plasticine, nothing really happens because this has a much larger area. So pressure is the amount of force per unit of area. And remember your units for this, force is in newtons, area is in meters squared, and so pressure must be in newtons per meter squared. Now it's very easy to make a mistake on this in an exam. You need to make sure you are converting your area to meters squared if it's not in that already. It's a very easy mistake to make if they give you an area in centimeters squared and you don't convert it into meters squared, you would lose a mark. So be very careful that you're using the right units. So you can link pressure and force and acceleration together and you can get a really good picture of how you are changing the shape or you are changing the speed of an object when you are applying a force.